she's here to scrap. Blast forward with it. That's how she got her finish in her last fight. Welcome to Chicago as Glory makes its annual stop for not one, but two action-packed nights for the weekend of Glory. On this edition of Rewind, we focus on Glory 71. Six bouts in all to recap on a night that featured two key bouts in the women's super bantamweight division, as well as battles in the heavyweight and welterweight division. But we start with the middleweights in an all-American battle between Andrew Navikis and Thomas Jenkins. Scheduled for three rounds, middleweight division, Jenkins in the black gloves, Navikis in the white. You see Jenkins wanting to switch stances, came out orthodox, quickly switched. So looking to switch stances, but no surprise, Navikis is going to want to pressure, but it's Thomas Jenkins that's doing the work. Some right, big clubbing right, right, right hands right. from Navikis. Right. Hey, right yeah, you're going to see Navikis want the overhand being the shorter fighter. Jenkins wanted to land the knees. Put the knees, bring them up. Navikis, 28 and 7 as an amateur, said, Watch my uppercuts, my leg kicks, and sure. my hooks. All right. Time in. This what? is the second time we're seeing Jenkins in glory. His first fight, Glory 58, Chicago. He had a fight with Matt Baker, which is a tough fight for anybody. Good low kick there for Jenkins. Break, break. Bring the break. Hands up. Box. In 2007, Andrew Navikis saw a poster for a tough man kickboxing competition. Said he's never. He said he'd never thrown a kick in his life. He was just a boxer. Right. But he entered it right. and, and right. won the tournament, won a thousand bucks, and that's Box. how he became a kickboxer. Yeah, and he didn't get to win four fights in two nights, too. Crazy. He said they had a mandatory that you had to throw three kicks around, so he'd go out there and just throw kicks and like a soccer right. player right off the top, three of right. them, and then box. Yep. The Vic is really slamming that overhand right. The smart move, what he just did, though, he right. threw two overhand right. rights, then mixed it to an uppercut. So change angles with the right hand. Right. Body kick from Jenkins. Right, right. Thomas Jenkins lost his fight to Matt Baker via right hand, so. That's probably what Navikis saw in that fight, and that's why he's continuing to throw it. Spinning back fist from Navikis. Nice knees from Jenkins. That's what he has to do against that, that boxing pressure. Right. Back up. Lean break. Lean break. Come on. Box. Jenkins said he didn't do well in his glory ba debut against Matt Baker because Baker was a tall guy like him. Says he does better against shorter guys. But Navikis bringing the hammer early. Yeah, he's coming. That's what he has to do, though. If you're, you can't play outside with that length that Jenkins has, so Navikis does have to enter. A smarter move for Navikis would be to enter on angles because you know that Jenkins is going to throw that knee, so mixing the angles on the enter could right. save him from right. getting hit from one of those. I'm going to grab. Break. Let's go. Fight. Break. Break. That'll do it for round one. Round two, scheduled for three. 
We'll soon see the judges' scores, and all three giving it to Andrew Novickis. I usually don't watch like watching these replays, but there it is. It grazed up, right? The toes nicked, we'll yeah. say. The toes nicked the cup. You good to go? You want to go? Yeah? All right. Time in. Box. So you see the corner of Jenkins wanting to throw the jab, which is a smart move. It's a good way to keep Navikis away from him. If you're tall and long, fight tall and long. Yep, use your jab, use your kicks on the outside. As the pressure comes in, mix the knees. Right, right, knee break, hands up, knee break. Nice left hook to the body, follow knee to the head for Jenkins. Just missed. Break, break, knee break, box. Good counter punching from Navikis, but Jenkins now bringing the volume. I tell you what, these guys are middleweights, but they look at least like light heavyweights. And Navikis hits like a heavyweight. And now he suffers a low blow. Exchanging the favor. Now here's this replay. Yep. It's our third low blow of the fight so far. Good respect from Jenkins to kind of lay up after he saw that Navikis was hurt. What was your strategy when hit with a low blow? How did you get over as quick as possible? Well, for me, for some reason, it kind of got me more aggressive. So when I came out from a low blow, you always see me with a little bit more fire. Just wanted to get it back. But it can gas a, gas a fighter out. You start feeling, you know, nausea in your stomach. Time in. Makes it difficult to breathe, so. Definitely takes uh, the gas tank down a few notches. Oh, good right hand, and then a body kick back from Jenkins. Yeah, if you know someone is really clubbing with their right hand, you can throw the left kick to the arms, kind of shut fight down out, that, fight out. that punch. Right, right, clean break, clean break. Let's go, come on, let's go, fight. Good right hand there. Oh, that may have been a body shot. That One. sent Devickis down. No, it was Two. the right hand from Jenkins I Three. saw. I could have been Four. wrong, but it looked like a, a nice right hand. Six, seven, eight, hands up. I don't even think Navikis knows what it was that sent him down. But he yeah. comes right back forward again. It was a delayed reaction. Sometimes it takes a couple seconds for the body to register. And now Jenkins trying to get a home run. Swinging for the fences. Uh, Jenkins wants the KO too. He's going after it. Oh, big right hand, and, and, up, and down goes the Vickers for the second time, two, and I don't think he's going to get up. He will not. Thomas Jenkins dedicating this fight to his father gets his win tonight in Chicago. And you can see how much it means to him. A lot of emotion in all fight week. We really saw him patient, holding things in, and he just let his emotions out. Congratulations Mom, to you. Thomas Jenkins. What's the time? A big kiss to his mother, Mary, back home in Minneapolis. What a night for him and his family. And hey, give it up for Andrew Navikis who came to fight. Yeah, he came scrapping. He won the first round. Came in slugging the power punches. He just got caught with that right hand. And the same thing happened to Jenkins in his debut. So you get better, you learn, you come back, and you do what Jenkins did. Let's see what happened on that first knockdown, Joe. I, I couldn't tell what it was. Yeah, I just caught that little right hand, clipped the temple. And then you can see that delayed reaction where Navikis had to kind of sit down. And you see him grabbing his chin there, just right on the point. Boom. All you need is those nice two knuckles to touch the temple. And that delayed reaction got a knockdown. Then the second one came. You see Jenkins fainting, trying to get, you know, um, they're trying to get Andrew to bite. Navikis kind of bit. Boom. Got the finish. One more look at it. He was damaged goods at this point. You can see it in his face, Joe. Yeah. He was ready to go. The left hook came, the right hand clipped. I mean, after that first knockdown, it didn't take too much, but that right hand clipped the jaw, the left clipped the jaw, the right hand just on top of the ear. You got to finish for Thomas Jenkins.
Let's take a quick look at our highlights. A knockout victory for Thomas Jenkins, who improves to 4-2, 4-2, and all four of his wins have come by KO. Andrew Novikoso came out in the first round, really pushed the tempo, landed some heavy shots like that left hook there, and won the round, I believe, by all three judges. Round two, though, a different story as Jenkins landed that shot on the temple. The biggest seems stunned, didn't know where he was, and after that, it was all downhill as Jenkins pushed forward, landed that right hand, and it was all she wrote. Final strikes by zone. You can see that Jenkins threw 105, landed 48. Nevikis threw 110, landed 53. It was very close until that second round when Jenkins put Nevikis down. Ladies and gentlemen, you watched it as it happened. This bout comes to an end with an official time of two minutes, 18 seconds of that second round and ends by knockout for your winner, Thomas Jenkins. With the win, Jenkins earns his first glory victory and fourth career knockout. Up next, the Super Bantam waits as fifth ranked Alina Pereira of Brazil took on American Crystal Lawson, who was making her glory debut. Let's go! Pereira was very impressive in her glory debut, a unanimous decision. Went on a straight right oh. hand, a one, two, two, and down goes Lawson! That's that oh. long, straight snapping Five. punches Six. I talked about. Seven. That's that Eight. danger, Eight. long Seven. snapping Seven. straight punches. Good. That may be the fastest go. knockdown in women's super bantamweight history. In fact, I'm sure of it. You can see how relaxed Alina Pereira is. So calm, knows her distance, and is gonna find that right hand again. Needed wow. the face. And a big straight right hand again. Crystal Lawson completely out of her oh. league so far. Five, six, seven, eight. She will need a miracle. And I mean a miracle to get back into this fight. In my opinion now, she's got to circle, not just sit there and go right into straight punches. Oh, so another circle. knee, and that is it. The referee waves it off, and it was easy, easy work for Alina Pereira, my word. It looks like she's just ready to start the fight again. No emotion. got a time? That's some serious power we saw in those punches. No celebration for Pereira. I think she understands that the level of competition was yeah. not anywhere near what she could handle. Yeah, and I mean, that's that's good respect there, and she knows that she's got work to do, but this was the next step for her. But we just saw that she has the ability to finish. Got to feel bad, though, for Crystal Lawson. Was so excited, and here's the first knockdown. A one-two. Right off the bat, you saw the, the head snap back, and Lawson hit the canvas. But you can just see the power and the length that Alina Pereira has in those straight punches. And then once she knew she had those punches, she started mixing things a little bit more. You saw her land the hook. And then she started getting aggressive. She started to mix her knees. That one just clipped. And just that long power was just too much for Lawson to handle. Just to get inside of that reach for Lawson was just way too difficult. And then when she finally got inside, Pereira had some knees waiting for her. That's some good distance control showed from Pereira. Ladies and gentlemen, you watched it as it happened. We have an official time of 59 seconds into the fight. This one ruled a technical knockout. For your winner, Alina Pereira! From the opening bell, Pereira was just too much for Lawson. Recording the quickest knockdown in super bantamweight history, Alina Pereira remained undefeated in glory and moved up one spot to number four in the rankings. We're just getting started on Rewind. Coming up later, the Women's Super Bantamweight Championship of the World, when two old foes once again battle for the belt. But up next, the first of two heavyweight matches when number five, Arkadush Vashosek, takes on American Demorio Dennis. This is Glory 71 Rewind.
Welcome back to Rewind. Next up, the heavyweights do battle as number five, Arkadusz Bashosek, takes on Demorio Dennis. We're scheduled for three rounds in the heavyweight division. One of Bashosek's best strikes, you're going to see him really mix his front kicks. It's a good range and distance controller, and then he could mix off his punch and kick combinations. And speaking of boxing, that sport taught us all too well. You can't judge a fighter by his physique. Andy Ruiz Jr. knocking out Anthony Joshua, the chiseled Brit for the heavyweight title. Already you see Demorio Dennis trying to stay in the pocket, try to mix his combinations, and he really likes his low kicks. Just like his brother, Demario Dennis is very tough. He can handle a punch and deliver one of his own. I mean, he's really focusing on his kickboxing, where his brother's been bouncing between MMA and kickboxing, so he's all into kickboxing, Demario. And I mentioned it earlier, Dennis was preparing for Junior Tafa, a fighter that's smaller than him, Joe. Now he's facing this behemoth through 6'7". Yeah, he's, he's taller than Tafa, you know, kicks a lot differently and a lot more. So totally different, but no problem. Nice combination work there for Vashosek. That really wants to stay long. Dennis feels that he needs to push Vashosek to get the win, get him against the ropes. Good right hand that split the guard. Right nice. away, you see Dennis block the guard, chop away, but not active enough in my eyes. Still trying to get inside, taking a lot of abuse in doing so. That's a little better when he's starting to mix his combinations when he's on the inside. Nice high guard. Straight right hand for Dennis. But here comes the Polish high tower. Yeah, with amazing level changes. Mixing the body, mixing his knees. Dennis can't stay there, shelled up. The low kick. He's doing everything right so far. Yep, he's mixing his strikes, keeping it a technical fight. Nice low kick mixed with the punches. Fight out, fight out, let's go, fight out. You just gotta hope that Dennis is trying to let Vashosek fatigue a little bit. Just like the strike variety that Vashoshik is showing. You got him showing his boxing, mixing his front kicks and low kicks. We saw nice knees. Now Vashoshik kind of curling up. He might be a little tired, Joe. Hey, who are those people, Second Joe? Oh, well, there's my sister and my dad. I don't. My mom's hidden right now behind my sister. There's your mom. Yeah, there she's poke, uh, her head peeking out. That's my sister in the middle, my dad on the right, and then my mom on the right of her. Her well, first kickboxing event. Can you believe that? She never wanted to watch Joe in person. Nope. Couldn't take it, and now she's here in person. As we look at the judges' scores, all three judges giving it to Vashosek. But he's coming out firing again, sitting down on his punches and kicks. Yeah, the way he's mixing that low kick, he's cutting it down, which is, a, is doing more damage than those slapping ones that we, we tend to see a lot of. So really cutting down, trying to finish that leg. Dennis has got to do something. Yep, the combination work from Vashosik is really impressive. And he's mixing it and doing it with level changes. Well, I told you that Dennis could take a lot of abuse, and that's exactly what he's doing through a round in a minute. And he's walking forward and taking them, but he just needs to maybe counter a little bit faster. But Vashosik just throwing everything behind all of his shots. Watch the back of the head. I'm not sure that Dennis has the energy to inflict any damage right now. It's, the life has been sucked out of him. Yeah, and the low kicks have added up now. 
Oh boy, that one hurt him. They're added up now. There's not much he can do when that lead leg's gone. Go, fight back. Dennis is a walking wounded man right now. The Dennis. left leg is mincemeat as the show set continues to target it. Dennis is trying to block it and he's getting some success, but the way for Shosik setting it up with his punches, he's continually finding it. Dennis has got to earn his respect, has to back him off of him. He's just a Go sitting corner. target. Oh, and it goes down. He's the corner. Four. Beautiful knockdown. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nose is bloody, left leg is shot. Put him up. He says fight. he wants to fight. Here we go. Fight. Is this the beginning of the end? In that knockdown, he ate an uppercut. So Fashosik needs to go back to that uppercut, back to the leg. Oh, and that low kick One. again. So devastating. Demario Two. Dennis. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hands up. You want to fight? Here we go. Fight. Looks like he'll survive the round. But the future oh. looks very, very bleak for the American. Oh. And that will do it. Three knockdowns in a round. And the Polish Hightower gets his eighth career KO. Yeah, and he was just able to slip that last low kick in before the bell went. And that was it. Dennis couldn't take it anymore. Good setups via the punches. Good showing from Vashosik. A brilliant performance by Arkadusz Vashosek, who never gave Demario Dennis a chance to do anything. No, nope. he stayed very patient, stayed technical, picked his shots really well. And you can see in the first one here, he's touching, peppering upstairs, which is smart. He knows he wants to go to the low kick, so he just peppers upstairs, tries to find the finish to the leg. But then he makes in that hard uppercut. You saw Dennis didn't go down. He had a free low kick, so he took it. And then here in the second one, again, you can see that patient sets it up, boom, finds that leg. At that point, it's too much for Dennis to do it, but he showed his toughness. He was able to get back up. And you see it here, there was less than 10 seconds left. And Vyshosek had one last kick left in him and got himself the TKO finish. Ladies and gentlemen, you watched it as it happened. This bout comes to an end by way of the glory maximum knockdown rule. One second short of the bell, the official time, two minutes, 59 seconds of the second round, ruled a technical knockout. For your winner, Arkadusz Vyshosek. In impressive fashion, Vyshosek improved his record to 13 and five, with eight of those coming by knockout. Glory 71 also featured a welterweight clash between Americans Mike Lemaire and Malik Watson-Smith both looking to make a statement within the division. Three rounds in the welterweight division. Michael Mayer in the white gloves, Malik Watson-Smith in the black. What do you expect to see in this fight? Well, I think Mike Lemaire has to pressure because he knows Malik Watson is very break, dangerous break, with his clean, kicks. Break, to shut down the kicks, you got to pressure with the boxing. So this is why you see Lemaire staying nice and close to him. Man, Watson Smith putting everything he's got into those punches. And Watson Smith said in his previous fight, he's been deducted points for clinching. So in this camp in particular, and since his last fight, he's been focusing on his inside boxing, not clinching. He needs to box his way out. Not just get comfortable in that clinch range. It's LeBaire who's closing the distance early. Yeah, LeBaire has that grinding style. He's gonna sit in your face, keep trying to tear you down. Right, right. Good low kick there from LeBaire. As Watson Smith just slowed down for a minute. Yeah, there's some redness on the, the right eyebrow of Mike Lemaire. Yeah, I don't Mike know if he was cut or is a scratch. Right. Sort of scrape. Sometimes you can get scraped by the laces on the inside, even though they're, they're covered with the tape. But Watson Smith said he's going to win by knockout tonight. No doubt about it. He's from Chicago. Said he's not going to have too many friends here tonight, though, because they were all asking him for tickets. Right. And he just started blocking people on his phone. Yeah, he says he shuts his phone off, like, in the last month of camp. 
He doesn't want to deal with people. He just wants to stay focused on the fight. So if you want to get a hold of Malik a month before his fight, I got no clue. Just show up at his house. He said Ticketmaster works just fine if you want tickets. Landed some good punches here. There is some involvement happening in his boxing. But the French Rock's going to keep trying to pressure you. Break! We break. We break. I go. I go. I go. You can see a big size difference. Oh, good right hand there for Watson Smith. Get back on the leg, Mike. Break. Corner of Mike Lemaire wants the low kicks. You always want the low kicks, don't you? Absolutely. Try to high kick there. Why not? You know, Watson Smith is being boxing heavy right now, so the time break, to throw your low break. kick is when your opponent throws his hand. So, good strategy for Team Lemaire. Interesting to see how the judges score this first round. Yeah, very interesting, because the biggest strikes came from Malik Watson with those punches, but the pressure from Lemaire had to have scored well as well. We pick it up in the third round. Break, break. All, right. All, right. All three judges scoring that one for Lemaire. Hold your corner right there. Come here. Stop. Come here for a second. Hey, bud, right to the nose. Let's go. I'm good. It's good? It's good. All right. So a headbutt to the hey, nose, and you saw your head going in. Let's go. two judges have it even. So if Malik Watson Smith can win this round, he could still win the fight. Yeah, he could find something, but Lemaire's just seems to be picking up in that second round. So let's see if this break, break, break. continues into this third. But Lemaire seems to be the fresher fighter, the more powerful one right now. When Watson Smith backs up against the ropes, he right. always pushes his hands down by his waist for a split second. Yeah, that's where you see Lemaire trying to close that. Yeah, that's why Lemaire's right. closing that distance, right. trying to right. capitalize right. on that. Great, right. let's go. Right. Oh, a big right hand just misses. Yep. Yep. A push down there for Lemaire, whose face looks a mess. Yeah. He looked right. at himself in the on the big screen. So Lemaire, who could certainly be a male model right now, looks anything but. His eyes are swollen, a cut over his eye, and his nose is busted open. Yeah, Mike Lemaire just yelled at us from headbutts. He wants to let us know to make sure we tell everybody they're from headbutts. Oh, that was a high kick that connected. Break, break, clean break. They almost promise blood every time Mike Lemaire fights. He always comes to scrap. Well, he's not taking a backward step. And there's that right hand. It is there every time. Yeah, especially his last fight with Abraham, he really wants to make sure he steals this decision because it's coming down to this round. The leaks. When you think he's out, he for some reason finds break, that sneaky break. little uppercut. Go, go. Yeah, he's like find some life. He looks exhausted, he looks gassed, and then lands a couple of shots. Break! Break! Turn around, break! Turn around. Let's go. Break. Break. Lemaire certainly looks fresher. Good knee. Yeah. Watson Smith was looking at the clock. There's a low kick. Yeah. Now he's listening to the corner, hitting the body. Here comes a right hand, like clockwork. Right, right. Let's go. Come on. Fight. Oh, nice knee. Big knee from the mayor. And then a right hand. Break. Back up. Back up. Back up. Stop. Ten go. seconds Fight. to go. Another uppercut by the mayor now changing levels. Low kick sets up the high kick. Right, right, right. And that'll do it. Bloodied and ugly. Let's show you what just went down between Mike Lemaire and Malik Watson-Smith. Well, it was a good first round for Malik Watson-Smith.
two out of the three judges giving it to him, but round two, the pressure of Mike Lemaire started to add up. We saw him coming in, really pressuring with his hands and his knees on the inside, but he just kept landing that right hand. We kept seeing Malik Watson Smith's head pop back a bit, but Watson kept finding life in it. He kept finding the uppercuts, but the pressure of Lemaire was just too much, mixing in his low kicks. You saw good right hands mixed as a straight or a right hook. But you saw two cuts on the mare, lots of blood, but that's not stopping him. Let's look at our fight statistics, strike count. Mike LaMare landing more than double the punches of Malik Watson Smith, although the kicks tilted in Malik's favor. Tim Hughes with the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of stand-up combat, we go to the judges' scorecard. Let's take a look at the totals. Two of our judges score 29-28. Our third and final judge sees it 30-27. All for your winner by unanimous decision, Mike LaMare! With the win, LaMare gets his 23rd career win and eighth in glory. Still to come, Anissa Mexen looks for her 100th victory as she defends her super bantamweight title. In her way, number one ranked and former glory champion, Tiffany Van Soos. But up next, we return to the heavyweight division, featuring top-ranked Benjamin Adegbui in a rematch with D'Angelo Marshall. Two top-ranked heavyweights took to the glory ring next when number two-ranked Benjamin Adegbui looked to make it two in a row in a rematch against number three ranked D'Angelo Marshall. Benjamin Adek Bui, born in Romania to a Romanian mother and a Nigerian father. Spent several years living in Nigeria before returning to Romania. He fell in love with his sport and now has a chance to put himself ready, in a ready, position where ready. maybe, just maybe, he gets a world title shot next. Scheduled for three rounds. The last time they met, it didn't go one minute. And already you see, oh, I was going to say Marshall being patient, but he's using his jab, trying to angle. But he knows he needs to be careful. Benny could explode at any moment. Nice combination for Marshall, who's going right oh, no. after Adek Bui. Yeah, good straight punches. Really well done. Sitting behind the jab, but he just needs to continue to be careful. Looks like Marshall has a lot of nervous energy. Yeah, he just, he is attacking. He did find a moment, but patience. He needs to stay patient. Keep behind that jab. Good one-two right up the middle for Marshall. Yep, right away, Benjamin Boy wants to control the ring. So right now, he's going to feel a little bit more comfortable. But Marshall won't allow it. Firing right back. Body kick there for Boy. He's got to be careful. Defend yourself at all times. I'm seeing some good angles in the footwork of Marshall. He's not just staying there. He's trying to, you know, step left, step right. And he's checking those kicks as well. Yep, sitting behind the jab. Over 500 pounds of kickboxing muscle, and I think Marshall may have caught Attic Bowie. He keeps landing the right hand and he makes the uppercut. Good start here for Curacao's D'Angelo Marshall. Yeah, he's looking bigger and stronger than we've seen him in the past, and it's really translating into his punching power. I'm a big believer in strength and conditioning when it comes to kickboxing. You know, it really helps you to develop that power in your punches and kicks. And it seems to be working really well so far for Marshall. Well, Attic Bowie says he's never been in better shape than he is right now. He's a little thinner than last time we saw him. He is cut, lean, and trim. Yeah, but his last fight was against Jamal Ben Sadiq, and you know, he got knocked out in that fight. So maybe he's a little bit more hesitant. He's staying a little bit more patient. Well, you must note that that fight happened in the same night he'd already won two before it. Yeah. It was an eight-man tournament. And in the semifinals, he had a fight of the year with uh, Jafar Wilness. Yeah, he was certainly damaged goods by that final. But Marshall is winning this first round, no doubt. Yeah, bigger shots, and 
Then he decided to come back as a southpaw. There's a nice counter left for Adik Bowie. There he's. Oh, oh cool. uppercut! And here comes the Romanian! He found some life at the end of this round. Oh! What an uppercut! And down goes Big Papa! He sets it up! That's what I talked about. Uses the jab, sets it up! Can you continue? Step forward. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Step this way. Step this way. Ready? And that'll do it for what was a great first round for D'Angelo Marshall into the final 10 seconds. Dennis Crowell really go. letting Attic Bowie have it. Yeah, he says he's got to go. He's got to put the action together. He's waiting a little too long. And he was yelling at him, telling me, you're not tired. He's going to need a lot of energy in this third round. Well, all three judges gave it to Attic Bowie. So all he has to do is survive this round. But Marshall is a destroyer. 11 knockouts in his 20 wins. Nice right hand from Adi Bui. That comes back with the left, then a right. And that pep talk did seem to energize Adi Bui, who's got more life right now. Yeah, starting to mix his strikes. We haven't seen any big combinations yet from Marshall. Whoa, there's an uppercut. This is incredible action from our heavyweight division. Number two versus number three. What's impressive is Marshall's taking these shots under his guard and his facial expression doesn't change one bit. You're just waiting for Marshall to land that right-handed bomb. In the meantime, I'm holding my breath because I'm waiting for an added boy uppercut. Good way to work. Work out, guys. Work out. Ooh. Marshall needs a knockdown and probably a knockout to win it. No knockdown. He slipped there. Both men have landed 78 strikes. Yeah, it seems like by the stat counts, Marshall the busier fighter. Punches up. The cleaner, up. the harder shots seem to be coming from Attic Boy. What action! These are 260 pounders, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, the volume these guys are throwing, just incredible. They look like welterweights. They're moving their head right, well, they're right. boxing, they're kicking. They're still hitting with a lot of power and good snap in this third round. Great work, guys. Marshall now starting to check the low kicks from Attic Boy. 30 seconds to go in what has been our fight of the night for sure. find that one punch that will send Attic Bowie down. He's got 10 seconds Ten to do seconds, it. Guys, clean the belt. Left hook, low kick. Attic Bowie still coming forward. Still leading shots. Time! Great, great stuff great, yeah. from our great, heavyweight great division. Beautiful. Really, really entertaining. Yeah, and that first round, the start for D'Angelo Marshall was incredible. Looking really good, sharp, technical. Got dropped at the end of that first round. But in the second round, Benjamin Attic Bowie continued to pressure, find the uppercut. But never in this fight would you say D'Angelo Marshall was out of it. He found his shots, kept coming forward, mixed his levels. But ultimately, Benjamin Attic Bowie was able to get in there, mix his strikes really well, and kept finding that uppercut that was doing the most damage in this fight. Beautiful. And what was almost as impressive as anything else was the stamina these two men showed. Look at the total strikes. D'Angelo Marshall throwing 229, Attic Bowie 155. And I know it's a big what if, but if Marshall hadn't been knocked to the canvas at the, the last second there of round bit. one, he probably <laughs> wins this fight. Since I'm the smallest guy in the ring, yeah, I'm feeling a little lame. Tim Hughes now with the decision. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this bout goes the distance, so we go to the judges' scorecard. All three of our ringside judges see the bout and score the bout the same, 30-26. For your winner, by unanimous decision, Benjamin Adegbui. With the win, Benjamin Adegbui improves his glory record to 14 and four. Could number one ranked Jamal Ben Sadiq be next? We'll step aside one more time, but when we return on Glory 71 Rewind, it's the Super Bantamweight title of the world between Anissa Mexon and Tiffany Van Seuss. Welcome back to Rewind. In this, the third title fight between stand-up combat's two best women fighters, Anissa Mexon looked to make it a clean sweep, but Tiffany Van Seuss had plans of her own. Ladies, you've had your final instructions. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Any questions? Touch them up. Back to your corners. They do not touch them up. Anissa Mexon has had enough of Tiffany Van Seuss and Vice Fighter versa. Ready. It ends Fight. here tonight. Five rounds for the Super Bantamweight Championship of the World. Right away, Van Seuss with the pressure wants to keep the fight in close Watch range. Around, ladies. Mexon throwing on the exit. Joe, you've said it many times before. If you go into a fight looking for a knockout, you usually don't get it. Yeah, you got to be patient. And I mean, I think Mexon, with her experience, knows right that, up, that right Tiffany's right tough. They've shared the ring for 10 rounds already. Break. Fight. Are you concerned at all that Tiffany Van Seuss had a black eye all week? She said she suffered it in her last sparring session. Well, who knows? It could be a good or a bad thing. I mean, at the end of camp, you're always a little bit more fatigued. You're cutting your weight. So things happen. So no concern from me. The last fight, the statistics were nearly identical. It was so close. And Mexen is afraid that American judges will lean towards Van Seuss. Good distance control shown by the champ. Being able to hit, attack the leg, and just keep her space. Ninety-nine professional wins for Anissa Mexen. Few, if any, have done it better. What can Van Seuss do differently in this fight that she didn't do in the prior two to get the win? Well, she needs to, to continue the pressure. She can't just kind of hit and move. She needs to hit and continue to follow and press forward. But the issue is then they end up in the clinch. Stop! You know, easier Lean said break. than done when you fight someone with such good That's distance control it. like Mexican, because they end up in this range with the pressure. Fight out. Break! Clean break. Fight! What's strike it selection. What's it feel like to get kicked in the back of the leg somewhere you're not used to taking those shots? Well, those can hurt sometimes, the hamstring, especially when the foot lands. I mean, some of the most painful low kicks you can take is across the front or the back. Usually the side is really conditioned. Oh, oh, nice high kick for Van Seuss. Brilliant. Right Landed right on the button, break. but Mexen handled it very break. well. Clean yeah. break. Continue to close the distance. Fight. We haven't really seen Mexen use her straight punches she's really good with. There she goes now. Straight right hand counter from Mexen. The low kick. Yeah, and Mexican's game is she always wants to stay ahead of you. You hit her with one, she'll hit you with two, three. Always takes the lead. Always trying to do just that little Fight. bit more. Fight is ready. We pick it up Fight. in the third round. Round three, scheduled four, five. Women's Super Bantamweight title on the line. I'm really liking those inside low kicks from Anissa Mexican. And it is all square, according to our judges. One round apiece. Mr. Mexon back to the leg. Watch the holding. Van Seuss attacking, trying to find different angles to enter at. Oh, nice. 
running right hand for Van Seuss. Van Seuss mixing the front kick well. Now switching stances, but the way Mexen shuts it down is oh. with strong punches. Nice left for Mexen. Yep, that inside low kick, you see her always going back to it. So jab, mix her right hand, or go inside left low kick. Good knee there for Van Seuss and a couple more, but she was holding her head down. Yeah, took the angle in the clinch, which is a, a good move to land more efficient knees. These rounds are always so hard to score between these two. Oh, nice knee from Van Seuss there. Couple of good low kicks there from Mexen. Oh, some of the better exchanges we've seen. It. Well, Mexen told us she's going for the KO and she's fighting like it. We're seeing her take some shots as well. Ah! You can see she's got a, the a little bump under her right Fight. eye. Yeah, she's got a mouse flaring up, and that could block her vision as this fight wears on. A couple low kicks from Mexican. Yeah, it doesn't look like a good swelling. A little blood on the face of Van Seuss. Not sure where it came from. Again, it's all about Mexen's right hand and inside kicks, but Van Su's front kicks and knees are doing well. That that bump under the eye of Mexen does not look right good. Out. They've got to get an in swell on it between rounds to reduce right. it. Clean break, ladies. Let's go. Break it up. And the judges right. will see that damage. Back to the legs for Mexen, but Van Su's not stopping. Looking at Pretty impressive so far. Time. Three minutes to go for the Super Bantamweight Championship of the World. Van Seuss gets two of the judges to give her round four. Stop. Stop. So at this point, if she doesn't go down, she wins the fight. fight. Mexican needs to start putting combinations together. There she goes. I wonder how much the damage to that eye is affecting the judging in this fight. I mean, Mexican is doing really good. She is scoring. She's landed good punches, good inside low kicks. But it just seems like the body language, and I mean, just staring at that eye, you always give the advantage to, you know, the other fighter. Another right super close Break. fight between Break. these two. Let's Not go. much Break has up, separated ladies. them at all. Great. Fight. Under two to go. Can Mexen muster up something dramatic here? Good right hand for Tiffany. Seems to be a better round for Mexen. But Van Seuss is going to continue to come back like every other fight. Great action. Fine. He may deduct a point here. Be careful, Joe. This could be massive. It's getting close to that elbow. Right he does not Come deduct on. a point. Fight. That would have been huge. Can you imagine? Less than a minute to go. Kick from Mexican. Good knee from Van Seuss. Stop! Stop! Clean break. Let's go. Fight! Break! Break! 
Break. Are we about to see the crowning of a new queen in this division? Under 20 to go. This is Maxine just Stop. still going, trying to score as Break. much as she can. Let's go. Break it up. Fight. Trying to get Van Suze back, but 10 seconds left. Another fantastic battle between Stop. the two best Stop. female kickboxers in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, this championship bout goes the distance, so we go to the judges' scorecard. Here now are the totals. Two of our judges score them out, 48-47. Our third and final judge sees it, 49-46. A unanimous decision, all for your winner. And new Super Bantamweight Champion of the World, Tiffany Vansu! She has done it! Oh my Tiffany Vansu back on top! Not to be denied, Tiffany Van Soost once again reached glory. That will do it for this edition of Glory Rewind. Up next, part two of the Weekend of Glory, when Glory 72 features the featherweight championship of the world. And don't forget to check out all things Glory on our website, glorykickboxing.com, or follow us on Facebook, Snapchat, and Instagram, as well as catch up on Glory features and fights on our YouTube channel. See you next time on Glory Rewind. Are you?